Legends TV, this is your opening post-match analysis of the 24-25 season following yesterday's 3-2 home defeat against Watford in SE 16. I know we lost the game, but 10 months away feels absolutely brilliant to be back. As always, let's kick off the show by taking a look at the 11 that Neil Harris picked to start the match. And so, as I predicted in my preview, the gaffer went with an un- Change side. It was Lucas Jensen in goal. Ryan Leonard right back. Joe Bryan left back. Sean Hutchinson skippered the side alongside Jake Cooper. It was Casper Denor, George Saville and George Honeyman in a three-man midfield with Romain Essay on the right. Duncan Watmore on the left and up front as a lone striker. Tom Bradshaw. I'm going to say in this video quite a lot. I got that right. I got that right. But don't forget, I also got it wrong about Watmore. I said he was... Uh, not that good anymore when he lost the plot a little bit, but he shut me up yesterday with two goals on the opening day. Before I get into the video, I'm going to start by saying, which I forgot to say in yesterday's full-time reaction, and credit to Kenny because the first thing he said, full full uh, respect to the Watford fans yesterday for going out of their way to make that banner for the Massage Art Sarkic tribute. Absolutely brilliant for me, and I didn't have to do that, but someone in that crowd has gone out of their way to take the time to think about things and make that so can't give the Watford fans enough credit for that. Um, getting into the game, I did predict in my preview that that was the team that he did go with. It was, of course, the team that lost last Saturday in the final friendly, also in SC16, against Southampton. And I said in my preview that, again, this is no disrespect to Watford this time because they won the game, but they finished two places below us in the league. They're very up and down with their form and they're chopping and changing of managers. And I feel that at home, especially against teams that I think will probably finish near us or in and around us, we absolutely have to go for the jugular. And that if we did go with a team that played Southampton, it wouldn't be enough. And, and, and it definitely, definitely wasn't. I think none more so was that proven when he did change it. And we went 4-4-2 because on reflection, again, I feel no disrespect to Watford, but I feel the scoreline flattered them a little bit. You know, individual errors cost us in that game, which we're going to get into. And when we went 4-4-2, it was definitely the better side. They might argue when we was chasing the game, we had to do something. But when we went 4-4-2 and we went for it, it was definitely the better side. We had the better chances, in my opinion. I don't think Jensen had a lot to do other than pick the ball out of his net three times. I don't remember him making a decent save in the game. And we've hit the post, the bar, uh, one cleared off the line, should have had a penalty. We hit the post twice, actually, I think. So, yeah, we did. Um, so it was definitely more than enough opportunity to, to, to win that game a little bit better team selection, a little bit better um, structure and, and ideas and, and, and more intent going forward. We definitely proved that we we can have the chances created if we do set up right. We just didn't set up right, in my opinion. However, I'm going to defend the gaffer and I'm going to say that I was confident and I predicted a 1-0 win. We predominantly, historically do well against Watford, like I mentioned in my preview. But I watched Neil Harris on Thursday on Sky Sports News. They was going around the ground, so speaking to all managers, some of them over Zoom, and some of them, they was at the training grounds, and it was at Calmont Road uh, to speak to Neil Harrison. From what he said, it was very open, it was very honest, and I thought we were spot on. But he said, look, we're still light in areas. I'm very happy with the squad that we've got on, uh, on the pitch and at the club, but we still need some more players at the top end of the pitch, and they're the ones that cost the money. So Neil Harris... Basically, what I'm saying is, well, we need to call the Jets. It's one game in. And I saw some people, unbelievable. I saw someone post on Thursday night. I got a, a comment come through on the YouTube on my phone. It said, um, Neil Harris needs to leave after Saturday's game. That's before we've been kicked to ball this season. So let's relax. Let's chill. If Neil Harris has said to us as a fan base throughout the Mill social media platforms or on a website or on that Sky Sports interview, look at the team I've built. Look what I've created over the summer. We're ready. We're going to do really well. Enjoy it. He hasn't said that. He said, we know we're still light. Some of you may be saying, well, why are we still light when the season's kicked off? And I think for us, I think definitely the budget and, and interest from players, not interested in players, players do they want to come to me or they're trying to get in teams that they've started the season with. They may not do that after the first week and their situation might change. But definitely budget. Neil Harris said in that interview, and he said it to us as a fan base as well before, that they're the players that cost the money, the flair players, the goal scorers. And we need to wait for a little bit of movement. We need to beg, borrow and steal as me. Well, we don't compete budget-wise with any other team in this division. Again, that's credit to the club for competing in this division 
league table wise for the last eight years. Um, I defended the gaffer there, and I'm not going to make this about one player because you know the reason we lost the game isn't this man's fault. But what I can't defend the gaffer for, and I cannot understand, is how Romain Essay is starting that game over Ida Maku. I'm all about the Mill youth and the investment in that. You know that. But I'm sorry to say, Romain Essay is absolutely fucking miles off this standard of football. And, and I'll be honest, I've not said this before. I don't think he's ever going to get there. He's got all the step overs and flicks and tricks, but he, he's, he's nowhere near ready. And for me, I saw enough in pre-season, I'm sure a lot of you did as well, to say, how the fuck has he started that game yesterday over Ida Maku? You don't want Maku as an impact player because at that point, you're accepting that you're going to be behind in a lot of games. You know, start him, get in front. Don't Let's not be this team that keeps trying to come from behind and salvage something. Let's go out and, as Captain Kev would say, put Watford to the sword. He loves that one. So that was a mistake. But look, it isn't Roman Lesse's fault that we've lost that game. And when we went to 4-4-2 and went with something a lot close to what I said he should have gone with, we got the job done. And I, I don't see how that wasn't obvious, that, that, that Amaku should have started that game. I really, really don't. But look, let's get into the game. We started out... There was a feel of that yesterday. I know it was the opening day, and I know I've said that you know it's brilliant to be back and that feeling you can get from football. But I'm taking that from from sort of the last half an hour. It was a little bit of a, a feel yesterday. That, I don't know. Usually, like, well, we're back, and it just sort of like it was like we never left yesterday. It didn't have that opening day feel about it, in my opinion. Um, the crowd wasn't a full house, which I was expecting it to be. I think the early kickoff played a part. Maybe people still on holiday played a part, and definitely what played a part would have been. The fact that it was on Sky, not main game, it's probably on the red button or Sky Plus, whatever. But um, Sky Plus, no, it wouldn't have been on that, would it? Anyway, um, yeah, look, we moan about that. I've moaned about that. But in reality, it's going to benefit the club um, from other areas, definitely sponsorship-wise, take it from someone who knows um, that it's, it's going to attract more money financially for club. What we're losing gate receipts will more than make up for in sponsorships. So it's a little bit of a nothing game. And then they get the opening goal, um, and you know what's happened by now if you don't, where you've been. Um, it, it's a direct call and it goes straight in. But leading up to that is a shot which Jensen gets down well and he saves. However, what he tries to do is he tries to hold on to it. So he, and he spills it and it runs out for a corner. So although it's a good save, he's at his near post and he's expecting the guy to come across goal. Of course he is. The guy shifts his weight, shoots it at the near post. Jensen has to then readjust his body, goes down, makes the save. But he tries to hold it. If he just pushes it wide, you say, good save. Because he's tried to hold it, and then he spilled it, you go, ooh, a little bit suspect. And he concedes a corner. I think that corner went into the front post and got cleared away for another corner, if memory serves me right. And I'm not sure whether that, well, I think it probably was, was in his mindset. Are they going to go front post again? Because his starting position isn't bad. And uh, people might say, mate, shut the fuck up. You're fat, you're 44. What the fuck do you know? I, I trained from a very young age up until... About 25 years old, I played at a good non-league standard. What? Not just that. I was coached at professional clubs uh, and, and by some very good coaches. Um, so I know your starting position is essential for a goalkeeper. From a corner, you want to be side on. You want to be slightly to the right of the goal, not in the centre of it. Because as a goalkeeper, I suppose any position, you want to be running onto a football. If you're backtracking, you can't see what's behind you. Uh, and his, his start position isn't bad. But I think that's in his mindset about the first corner because he just makes a mad run for his front post. And then he completely misses the ball. It actually goes in from where I was sitting, obviously, in the Dockers. It looked like it dipped right into the opposite top corner. It ended up in the corner, but it actually dipped just under the bar in the middle of the goal. And he's just miles, miles, just lost his head. He's made a mad dash for the front post. He was still underneath the ball when it went in. He just went to throw his fist at it, completely misses it, and, and it nestles in the net. He actually ends up in a fucking heap. Beyond the front post, and Sean Hutchinson looks at him, goes like that. I think he goes to have a go at him and thinks, better not bollock him. He's, he's brand new and obviously he's already suffering from a confidence hit after the uh, Southampton goal. He can see, I think that factored into it because not long after that, it was a shot from a Watford player that hits a middle defender and it trickles towards the, the, the goal line or the byline. And it's not near the goal. When he goes to pick it up, there's no one around him. He picks up and drops it. So he's definitely suffering from a little bit of a confidence crisis early in his mill career. Let's not get on his back too much. Uh, it is the first game. It isn't the end of the world. I don't know if I'll be saying that in 45 games time, but he's new to the division. He only had one year at Lincoln. We bought him for money. Um, so hopefully in time, it, it'll improve, but we can't fucking hang around forever. 
you know what I mean? We've got three away games coming up now, and he, he needs to sort of get a, get himself and, and his mindset right and, and, and get back into the swing of things. I'm sure a few clean sheets, a good little run, and a couple of saves will help him out. Because as I said, I don't think he even made a save yesterday. After that, we respond. There's a good move down the right. I think it's Honeyman that whips it in. And Bradshaw's running across goal. Flick it under, under attention from a defender. I'm now at the other end. We're, we've now taken Husky's old double box after they backdoored it. So I'm now not up near the scoreboard. I'm down nearer the cold blow, but sort of towards the centre circle a bit more. So you'll have to let me know in the comments. Could have Bradshaw done better on that one? I'm not sure, but I thought we'd done enough. But his, his head, I think, went well wide. And then we have the opportunity where we hit the post, could have had a penalty and have one clear off the line in the space of about five seconds of each other. Um, good work from Watmore. Again, shut me up. And he gets the ball, he shifts it past one, goes past another, and then he goes to pull the trigger and he's fouled. It then runs to Honeyman, and Honeyman should score, but it's the inside of the post. It comes out, Honeyman shoots again, defender blocks it on the line, and the Millwall players and fans screaming, appealing for a penalty. Now, where do we lie on this? Because I think the ref's mindset is, right, okay, play me advantage, because if I stop the game there and you miss that penalty, and Honeyman scores, and I pull it back for the penalty which you missed, I'm going to get pelters, but that's, I think, what he's thinking. So that's what he's done. But then, obviously, when Honeyman does miss, he doesn't pull it back for the penalty. And I think that's a little bit of an, an open house on that one, on that rule in general with football, because I've seen referees give an advantage, which comes to nothing, and then pull it back and go, no, the advantage came to nothing, penalty. But I've also seen him do what the ref did yesterday. Well, no, hang on, I gave you the advantage, so I now can't give you two decisions and bring it back. Where do you lie on that in the comments? I'm not sure there is an exact rule on it, but regardless, by the by, we don't score, and we go in at half-time, and it is nil-nil. We started the second half a little bit better, knocking on the door. George Honeyman whips a great ball in. I always say he's, uh, his final ball isn't the greatest, or his final end product. It obviously wasn't when he hit the post. Again, very close, but he's hit the post. Uh, but his free kick for George Savile is absolutely brilliant. In real time, I think I said Savile was about six yards out. I've watched the highlights back this morning. Savile's about three, four yards out when he thunders that header against the post. Again, yes, he's unlucky. Yes, he does everything right other than hit the back of the net. And we should have been level at that stage, but we wasn't. And just when you felt the momentum was building for us, they got the other end, they scored a second goal. Now, again, not as stonewall as that's down to the keeper as the first one. However, unfortunately for me, at six foot, fucking six inches tall, the goalkeeper from 35, 30 yards, 100% absolutely has to be getting across there. He's in the right start position. He lines his wall up. He's not behind his wall, so he's not unsighted. He's not too far over the other side, you know, towards the left-hand side of the goal. So if he does have to get across, he's got time to get across. And I think a simple way to explain this would be strip it back, right? Take everyone out of the stadium other than Jensen, the guy that scored, and the football. Try it with your mates if you want. You probably won't. Go over the park, right? Give your mate a free kick from 35 yards out and say, try and score. It's very, very difficult to do that. It's a great strike, yes, but nine times out of ten, you should not be letting in a shot from 35 yards, one man with a football, and you're in the goal protecting it, especially if you're a professional goalkeeper, especially if you're six foot six. I'll give an exception to if it hits the underside of the bar or goes in or David Beckham's taking it or it goes in the stanchion, then you can hold your hands up. But he, he has to get across. He doesn't go in off the post. It goes. It does go in the corner. But for me, absolutely 100%. Once again, the goalkeeper's got to save it. And we're 2-0 down with a mountain to climb. At that point, Gaffart makes changes and it goes to something a lot closer to what I said he should have started with. He brings on Landstaff up front to play with Bradshaw. And a massive thing was he brought a Maku on, but not just that. He put Watmore on the right. Now, I've said this before. Watmore on the left, going up the wing, you know, will be on his left foot, not the confidence maybe to try and take someone on. So he's got to cut back and go sideways or look for a ball inside because, you know, a whipped ball from that angle across is not going to be any good to anyone. And he doesn't execute him anyway, along with any other winger we've got. He went on the right and we went to something with proper wingers, which growing up as a kid is the only thing that ever used to happen. A winger gets the ball, he knocks it past the fullback and he fucking runs to the touchline and gets crosses in. Not only that, those crosses are going to be the type of crosses across the six-yard line or across the line of the penalty spot 
low and hard, whipped from the byline, cutting back a little bit, that will be bread and butter and exactly the type of crosses that Bradshaw and Langstaff will and have score goals from. So, you know, I can't keep saying it. Let's, let's, let's get out this mindset of this new age football a little bit because we don't always do it. We're quite direct on the Neil Harris. But surely, as Mill Football Club, the only way it's going to benefit us is get wingers to fucking knock it beyond defenders, hit the touchline and whip crosses low and hard across the box. Because it's how we got our goal which brought us back into the game. And I'll say it, and I've said it time and time again, as a defender, this is why defenders are always side on. Ian Dawes used to do it brilliantly, always side on. Because if I'm here and as fat and as slow as I am, and you're facing me, and I'm travelling in the same direction as the football, to, for you, even if you're quicker than me, to turn, get in your stride, and then try and catch me before I can get across in, is very, very difficult. And that's and that's what Watton was doing. That's why he looked so good in the second half. Also, the shape we went to with proper wingers, getting down the lines, got us further up the pitch, and I thought it allowed Saville, who I thought was brilliant in that second half, and Denor, who I thought played really well in the second half, to, to be more attacking, to be proper midfielders. They wasn't on the back four's toes, taking balls off and knocking them sideways. They had the space to, to move into because the wingers were taking us up the pitch. It was a lot higher. And we created a lot of chances in that second half. Um, I've heard the Norse getting a lot of shit on social media. Um, I thought we played really well in the second half yesterday. And it just shows, again, how fickle football is. I got shit last year for saying, I don't think Casper's the Norse is anywhere near as good as a lot of you think he is. We signed him. He's got a great name. Sounds like a great footballer. He got substituted at Plymouth away and he had to walk the long way around the pitch, walk past our fans. Sorry. Give it one of them. And everyone was going, ah, fucking proper wall. What a player. Um, no, he wasn't. But look, I thought he played well yesterday. So answers in the comments. What did you think of the Norse performance or everyone's performance for that matter? Because I don't think it's as bad as, as people were saying yesterday. First half wasn't great individual errors. Yes, but I, I felt we created a lot of chances and looked very dangerous in that second half, again, you may argue, and what for fans will argue, well, he was chasing the game. So you had to do something. Eventually, we get back into it. Amaku goes down the left. He cuts it back again. Look, it's not a great cross. But like I said, if you put balls into that area, anything can happen. Mistakes. Um, you know, someone could score an own goal or whatever. And it's exactly what happens. The defender tries to blast it away first time. It's what more. Drops at his feet. And he fires it into the roof of the net. Ida Amaku was a breath of fresh air yesterday. Um, but again, people saying, oh, what's a winger? He's a winger. Why? Who, who told you Ida Bamak was a winger? Did he ring up and tell you? Because I didn't know any first thing about him when he turned up and he's young and he's raw. And I hope that doesn't get milled out of him, but it's still time to develop him into any type of player that we want him to be. And if you can imagine what he does on that left wing, imagine him running straight through the middle, getting balls off Savile and Denor and travelling to join him with a front two. I don't think he's a left winger. He's not left footed. And I know people like to cut in and shoot on their right foot in this day and age. But for me, I would absolutely love to see him play central. Me and my two sons are in the background, by the way, that photo. And my youngest is still, in his lifetime, never seen Mill win a football match live. That's probably why he doesn't like coming too much. But look, then we get the equaliser. It was coming. And when it came, it was the one time in the game that Amako actually fucked up. He got the ball, over, overrun it, or took, took a loose touch, um, and he was going to be in. Anyway, loses it. Watford player takes it off him. And what he does, though, he shows his determination and his aggression. He chases it back. Savile joins in. We turn him over. And then Savs travels and he does something which a lot of our players don't do and haven't done and always moan about is he doesn't panic. He makes the right decision. He buys his time and he picks the perfect ball for Watmore, who takes a touch and fires it into the opposite corner. Two goals for Watmore, back to level terms. I thought... In real time, obviously, I'm in a docker stand. It looked like a brilliant goal. And I'm taking nothing away from Watmore, but it just shows you how simple football can be when it's executed properly um, because it, it took a touch and then it, the, the, the space was there for him. And the goalkeeper didn't move. But after that, you know, I'm still celebrating the goal. The live stream's going on. And, and I sort of hear, oh, I've looked, whoa, I've looked up and I've seen Jensen like this and their guy heading it in for the 89th minute winner. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I didn't really see it. People in the comments saying, fucking goalkeeper, Jordan Archer, Mark II, George Long, Mark II, fans going mad around the ground. He's fucking useless. Um, I've watched it back now, obviously, and I'm going to say the last goal for me, it's not the goalkeeper's fault. It's bad game management from the experienced players further up the pitch. I still don't know how it got to that point 
of the guy having the opportunity to whip the cross in. But Savile throws himself in front of it. It takes a deflection. It flicks up in the air. And it's a little bit unlucky that it lands right on top of their player's head. The goalkeeper's probably set for the cross, was considering coming. The deflection has changed all that because now he's got to wait and see where the ball's going to end up. And um, he makes himself big. But Ravic heads it in. And for me, not down to the goalkeeper, the last one. You can definitely put the first two down to him. But despite being the 89th minute, there was still obviously a long time to go due to injuries in the game and a couple of stoppages. Ryan Leonard, absolute warrior. Um, Terry Butcher-esque bandage on his head. And Lenny eventually went off and was replaced by Danny Mack. When he went. So he come forward more and more. We had the other chance where it got cut back and what more could have had the actual Again, felt we did everything right, really. He's running away from goal. Didn't have long to think about it. Side foots it. And it's a good save from their goalkeeper who saves it right on the goal line. And I was really pleased as well, although it didn't count for Langstaff. We shoot a ball in, uh, it gets cleared, it gets put back in. Cooper heads it across and Langstaff is in the right place at the right time on the stretch, gets something on it and it cannons off the top of the bar. It was a judge to have been offside. But look, what I say about Langstaff, people saying he hasn't touched the ball. It, it, listen, he's no mug. He knows where to be in the box. And if he gets the opportunity, he'll probably score the goals. But he didn't on that occasion. It would have been offside if he did. And we lose the game by three goals to two. Again, look, not the end of the world. It's the first game of the season. Yes, we're disappointed. We lost and we had lots of chances in the game. But individual error from the goalkeeper has definitely cost us. And um, I think that Harris, the positives he can take from that is that well, he, has to, he has to learn from that. He has to absolutely learn from that and go, do you know what? I've got to go with his 4-4-2. And Matthew's got to play. Because as I said, it helped Savile and and Denor drive through the middle. It gave us more width, which dragged us up the pitch and made us much more of an attacking threat. Having said that, it's going to be difficult to do that in the next three games because we're away to Pompey in the Cup on Tuesday, away to Bristol City next Saturday and away to Hull the Saturday after that. So a difficult start to the season. And I'll be honest, I'm not expecting it to get a lot better in the next two or three weeks. I think there'll be players coming through the door this week. But even if they do come through the door this week, I think they'll struggle to be integrated in time with, with the club, the surroundings and their teammates to be playing as a starter against Bristol City on Saturday. Not so bothered about the, the cup against Pompey on Tuesday. But there you go. That's your post-match analysis done. I've probably forgotten some stuff and I apologise if I do. I always do that. I've put the video out and go, fuck, I forgot to say that. But I've already filmed this once and for some reason the audio didn't work. And it's now quarter to seven at night. So I need to try and get this out by hopefully when you're watching this about 9 p.m. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.